Yahweh is a lover of beauty. He filled the universe with beauty. From the glisten of the newly fallen snow to the brilliance of a peacock's plumage, from the delicate and varied colors of the tiniest flower to the glitter of precious stones, the beauty in the mind of the Creator is illustrated in all of the magnificence of His divergent creation. Even the New Jerusalem, which will become the metropolis of the New Earth, is indescribably beautiful. Gold paves its streets, its walls are all of jasper, its gates are pearls, the foundation of stones are of precious gems, all double refractory, diamond, sapphire, emerald, amethyst, and so much more. It is natural for the mind of man, originally created in his Maker's image, to enjoy and desire beauty. One common arena in which people focus their desire for beauty is in personal adornment. The desire to adorn ourselves is common to people of every time, in every country, whether through the latest fashions, or with colorful makeup, or sparkling jewelry. The wearing of precious metals and gemstones, in and of itself, is not inherently sinful. The Creator Himself made them, and originally adorned the highest created angel, a covering cherub, with precious jewels. Using the symbol of the king of Tyre, Yahweh said of Lucifer, Thou sealest up the sum full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. Thou hast been in Eden, the garden of El. Every precious stone was thy covering, the sardius, topaz, and the diamond, the beryl, the onyx, and the jasper, the sapphire, the emerald, the carbuncle, and gold. The workmanship of thy tablets and of thy pipes was prepared in thee in the day that thou wast created. Thou art the anointed cherub that covereth, and I have set thee so. Thou wast upon the holy mountain of El. Thou hast walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. Lucifer was the highest created being. He stood nearest the throne of Yah. Every precious stone set in gold was his covering. The ceaseless light flowing from the Omnipotent reflected off the stones, casting them into brilliant display. This was the covering created by Yahweh for his most resplendent angel. The very next verse is a heartbreaking commentary on the effect such adornment has on fallen hearts. Thou wast perfect in thy ways from the day that thou wast created, till iniquity was found in thee. Iniquity, sin, pride. Lucifer fell through pride. The generous gifts of his Maker did not fill Lucifer's heart with gratitude, which would produce love. Instead, he chose to nurture selfishness and pride. Far too often this is the effect personal adornment has on fallen human nature. At the fall, man, created in the image of Yahweh, took on the nature of the arch-rebel Satan. Whether the choice of personal adornment is the trendiest fashions, glittering jewelry, or makeup, it is wrong when it is used to attract attention to one's own self, so that others will admire you. Such motivation is based in pride. It is important, as with every area of Yahweh's law, to understand the principles that underlie the law for these reach into the heart. Mere surface transformation is not what Yahweh desires. Rather, Yahweh looks at the heart, the attitudes and beliefs that constitute the soul. 
Yahweh's instruction to Samuel should be heeded by all who desire conformity with heaven. Do not look at his appearance or at the height of his stature, for Yahweh does not see as man sees, for man looks at the outward appearance, but Yahweh looks at the heart. Many who would never wear jewelry seek to attract attention through dress or makeup. As with gems, makeup of itself is not inherently sinful. When used to camouflage a birthmark, to cover a scar or other defect, or to make a person look more normal, there is nothing wrong with it. As with precious stones, a problem arises when makeup or a flashy, expensive wardrobe is used to attract attention to one's self and to inspire admiration and envy in others. Any enhancement or self-adornment used to inspire envy or admiration in others for one's body or one's wealth is wrong. Such actions display on the outside the pride reigning on the inside, in the heart. Paul warned against the sin of prideful display when he wrote, in like manner, also that the women adorn themselves in modest apparel, with propriety and moderation, not with braided hair or gold or pearls or costly clothing, but, which is proper for women professing godliness, with good works. Based on this text, some have assumed no one should wear braids, However, Paul was speaking of the excesses of the Roman and other wealthy women who attempted to copy them. Roman women originally dressed their hair with great simplicity. Simple hairstyles for married women changed during the reign of the Emperor Augustus when a variety of different and elaborate hairstyles came into fashion. The clothing fashions of Roman women remained relatively simple and unchanging, and as women, unlike the men, had no special dress that distinguished their status, the wealthy women wore luxurious materials, highly elaborate hairstyles, makeup, and expensive jewelry. Roman women used hair dyes, wigs, curling tongs, and braids to create elaborate, often complex styles that took many hours to create. Thin gold wires, often threaded with pearls or precious gems, were woven together to form intricate hairnets, while undeniably beautiful, the entire practice was for the express purpose of self-exaltation and to inspire admiration and envy in others. It was this against which Paul was writing, not a simple braid. These principles hold true in every area of dress and adornment for both men and women. Fashion trends often emphasize an unnatural look. Blue, pink, or other unnaturally dyed hair colors in some, immodest exposure of the body in others, are both pleas for attention. It shouts, Look at my body! Look at me! The body piercings, tattoos, and scarification that are spreading rampantly among today's young people are expressly forbidden by Scripture. You shall not make any cuttings in your flesh for the dead, nor tattoo any marks on you. I am Yahweh. These practices originated among the heathen as tributes to the dead. No one who wishes to honor a pure, holy Elohim will participate in such practices. Scripture does record the wearing of jewelry by the Israelites. Abraham's servant, sent to fetch a wife for Isaac, gave Rebekah a golden nose ring weighing half a shekel, 
and two bracelets for her wrists, weighing ten shekels of gold. King Ahasuerus gave Mordecai his ring of office. And Mordecai went out from the presence of the king in royal apparel of blue and white, and with a great crown of gold, and with a garment of fine linen and purple. However, jewelry and elaborate apparel were never worn during the times of heart-searching and repentance. At those times, all bodily adornment was laid aside, and the people dressed very simply. Not even perfumed oils were used. When Daniel fasted and prayed, seeking to understand a vision, he recorded, In those days I, Daniel, was mourning three full weeks. I ate no pleasant bread, neither came flesh nor wine in my mouth, neither did I anoint myself at all, till three whole weeks were fulfilled. When Yahweh called Jacob to travel to Bethel to worship him there, Jacob called on his family to repent, linking the wearing of earrings to the worship of false gods. And Jacob said to his household and to all who were with him, Put away the foreign gods that are among you, purify yourselves, and change your garments. Then let us arise and go up to Bethel, and I will make an altar there to El, who answered me in the day of my distress, and has been with me in the way which I have gone. So they gave Jacob all the foreign gods which were in their hands, and all their earrings which were in their ears, and Jacob hid them under the terebinth tree, which was by Shechem. Every year at Day of Atonement, all bodily adornment and elaborate apparel was laid aside as Yahweh's people sought his face for the forgiveness of their sins. In heaven, Yahushua will place a crown on the head of each overcomer. These will be far more glorious than any crown that ever graced the brow of the most powerful earthly monarch. Until that time, however, Yahweh's people are living in a world of sin. Fallen nature longs for adoration. Those seeking to reflect the glory of Yahweh will not seek to draw attention to themselves. The inherited and cultivated sinfulness of humanity is the reason Yahweh's only begotten Son had to die. To seek to draw attention to one's poor, sinful body is to fall prey to pride the sin for which Lucifer fell. Scripture warns, Pride goeth before destruction, and an haughty spirit before a fall. Better it is to be of an humble spirit with the lowly than to divide the spoil with the proud. Under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, Peter set forth the true standard to which all should aspire. Do not let your beauty be that outward adorning of arranging the hair, of wearing gold, or of putting on fine apparel, but let it be the hidden person of the heart, with the incorruptible ornament of a gentle and quiet spirit, which is very precious in the sight of El. For in this manner, in former times, the holy women who trusted in Yahweh also adorned themselves. Those living in the closing scenes of Earth's history will be seeking holiness of character, laying aside all that would distract or misrepresent the purity and selfless character found in heaven. Now is the very last remnant of Earth's allotted time, the anti-typical Day of Atonement, the children of Yahweh should examine themselves with their lifestyles to see if changes should be made to reflect a purer heart devoted to Yahweh.
lay aside every unnecessary, prideful adornment. Humbly seek Yahweh for transformation of character. He will write His own law upon your heart, and you will be truly beautiful. A reflection of heaven's glory.